Satcom. Uh, I've been in, in, in this industry for 14 years. Uh, I've been doing field work at work. And then after 10 years of uh, roaming around, around the globe for this job, so I moved in for coordination. And then uh, last two years, I've been doing management for field services for Satcom. So, bilisan lang natin kasi daw ang mga wala. Pero kailangan kong tulong ng mga ECE student. Talim ba yung ECE student dito? Anong elective niyo? Power electronics. Power electronics. Power electronics. May communication. May communication din kaya? Sinabi mo yan, ha? Sinabi mo. Okay. Siya lang daw yung communication. Then, meron naman kayo wired and wireless, di ba? So, let's see. Kung ano na-retain sa utang. I would not explain too much of this. I would like you to answer it. Sure ka po, ha? Alright. Ang satellite communication for maritime industries is mostly global. Kung mapapansin nyo siya, ang common sa kanila is yung nag-dome. Yan yung rad-dome na tinatawag. So, doon sa mga, unfortunately, sa industry, wala ko na kayo field engineer na babae uh, doing this job. Unfortunately. Uh, bakit ka mo? Kasi may mga barko kasi na, ano ba, uh, Muslim. Hindi sila nagpapapalit ng babae sa barko. So, engineers, mostly men doing this job. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, rewarding trip na ako na to kasi malaki. Office pa din, pwede sa Uh, support. Back and support. Yeah. So, uh, with, with these slides, kasi mostly yung slides na to is from the industry. I'm a technical trainer for the company also. So, I've been doing training for different nationalities and service partners for the company. So, I'm using this slide. So, these vessels are Marling's customer. I'm affiliated with Marling. So, this Hub is in Ike Teleport in Norway. So ito yung central hub namin. So, ito na, maganda. At tagyan natin ang basic. So, extraterrestrial relays. Ito yung sinabi ni Arthur Clark before when he published his papers in Wireless World. And based on his calculation, an orbit of a satellite on the radius of 42,000, more than 42,000 kilometers would take around 24 hours. So that's the basic full rotation, same as Earth. Right? So it also calculated that it would take 1.2 kilowatts of transmission power using a dipole antenna. So that would be 50 watt when using a small parabola. Okay, let's go, Brad. Okay, let's go. So, first question. Sino na una sa dalawa? Ang Sputnik ba o Intercept? Sputnik. Sputnik. Tapos kayo itong kamoy naman. Sino, 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 Sputnik 1. Bibigyan kita ng... Totoo yun. Eh, yung Sputnik 1, which is a Russian satellite. Sila ang unang nakapagpadala ng satellite sa space. Okay. Apas-pasan lang natin kasi baka tulugan na daw ako. Alright? So, sa, sa satellite communication, we usually, uh, na you utilize na satellite is geosync through satellite. So, geosync, it means sync through the rotation of the Earth. So, geostationary orbit is circular orbit about the Earth's equator. Okay? So, I think this is something that you should know kung nagkaroon kayo ng SATCOM subject para sa mga ko ay mga kapatid. Natatlasan na lang tayo. In the period of 24 hours. So, synchronous siya in the rotation of the Earth. Can you please? Uh, 
So ito yung sa ngayon, bibilisan natin, mag-focus muna tayo sa deployment ng satellite uh, na current na ginagamit niya. So alam niyo naman siguro yung uh, mga companies na nagpapadala ngayon, like Facebook, magpapadala sila ng satellite sa space. Ang um, Tesla, conglomeration sa OneWeb. So yung OneWeb, malaking ano yun, ang uh, ginamit nila is Leo Satellite. So ang lifespan ng isang satellite nila is months lang. And then after months, magpapadala na naman sila. Pero ang sinasabi nila doon sa Leo is more on high-speed internet. So ang, ang iridium na ginagamit ngayon is how many satellites? Ang deployment ng iridium. Ala, ganun. Board exam. Board exam. <laughs> Yeah. How many satellites, Leo satellites, can cover Earth? 66. Sumagot kayo, marami pa ito. Ba't mo na kumikit? May premium pa? May premium. May premium daw, oh. Isa tag ng program. So, tignan nyo na lang ito sa Wikipedia. Good as reference for electronics engineers or communication engineers. Kasi sa board exam, hindi mo alam kung ano nalabas. Sa board exam, parang hindi nang nabasa yan. So usually, yung ginagamit natin for communication is geostationary orbit. Ang sumunod na question doon, isa nung ginagamit yung signal ng satellite. Sino nang nakala? Sino may subscription ng signal? Signal. TV. TV sa akin. So may satellite siyang ginagamit. So, dapat alam nyo din yun. Kasi tatanong nyo kayo sa board exam. Yun. First commercial satellite na ginagamit sa Pilipinas. So, dapat alam nyo. Okay. So, on this figure, makikita mo siya kung mapapansin mo yung rotation ng GOC in terms of time. It's within 24 hours, makukumplit niya yung single rotation. So yung iba naman, like MIO satellites, kung tatanong mo kung ano yung commercial na gumagamit ng MIO, uh, O3B, yung company na O3B, ginagamit nila yung MIO. Ang Iridium is LEO satellites. So, Telesat, another company, is using a tele, uh, LEO satellite. OneWeb is a LEO satellite. Yan yung mga lalabas ngayon in the next few years, yung OneWeb. So at the moment, we're focusing on GeoSync satellite. Balik tayo doon ba? Mga madali, So the inward output forces for the satellite must be equal to make sure that the satellite stays on its orbital location. So basic VSAT structure, geos, uh, geosatellite or geostationary Earth orbit or geosynchronous equatorial orbit. So satellite keeps fixed position in, in respect to Earth. NOC is the network operation center. So yun yung sa ay kanina yung nasa gitna ng picture. Siya yung NOC na tinatawag. And of course yung remote station, yan yung VSAT vessel on VSAT. <coughs> so very small aperture terminal. So tandaan nyo yung, yung acronym ng VSAT, hindi siya next name ha, acronym siya. Kasama sa board exam siya? O oh, yan ha. Okay, very small aperture terminal. And usually, size is more uh, lesser than 3 meters. So pag sinabi mong more than 3 meters siya, hindi na siya visa. Earth station ang tawag. 
Okay, basic lang hindi discuss natin. Okay. Pag sinabi mong earth station, ang size ng antenna is more than 3 meters. Pag sinabi mong VSAT, smaller than 3 meters. Why small aperture? Babalik ka sa basic antenna mo, the bigger the antenna, <laughs> Alright, uh, this is the basic structure for the satellite communication on board vessels. You have your antenna, piece of antenna, which is for the inside the radome. And of course, it has an uh, antenna control unit. Of course, your routing IPYP devices, depending on what type of services that you offer for your customer. Sorry, we do a commercial approach. Time. And then, of course, your hub, and you have your plane. What is the acronym? Uh, what's the definition of POTS? <coughs> POTS. Come on. Plain old telephone system. POTS. POTS. Okay. Let's move on. High level system overview. This is how it looks like. So, from hub perspective. So, this um, focus ng study natin today is more on this link, transmission link. So, from modem to either the hub or the hub side and through the satellite. So, on board, you have your ACU for the modem. Your switch, usually, it, it goes through a network within the vessel. So, kung mapapasin mo, lahat ng vessels ngayon, uh, especially next year, it will implement uh, requirements na ng IMO is to have an internet connection for each vessel globally. And then each vessel or each company should have should run a cyber security. So ito, trabaho to mga kapatid. So this is how it looks like. So mga ECE dyan, pag napunta ka sa industry, itong tinatawag na antena. Yung nasa loob niya yung antena. So in the future, kung babalik kayo dito, let's discuss about how the antenna works. So, electromechanical siya, marami siyang concept inside the antenna systems. So, marami tayong i-discuss. So, from here, you can see two cables, RF cables, the transmission and the reception. Of course, you will need a gyro, you will need main power, power <coughs> switch, modem, power distribution, and of course, the AC. So, basic terminology tayo. Pag natin sa industry, tatanungin ka, ano ang uplink signal ng system mo? So, itong sinasabi nila, pag sinabing uplink, ang reference mo is teleport. Going up. And then, downlink is from the satellite. Okay? Uplink, downlink. Another way, meron yung mga DBB signal na sinasabi, ang term na gagamitin is downstream and upstream. But downstream, it's going to the remote. And upstream is from the remote going back to the hub. Clear? Yes. All right. Let's explain this. So this is the ITU uh, standard for frequency allocation in, based on the regulation. So which, to which satellite communications are commonly used? We use KA, KU, X, C, and F. So take note of the frequency allocation. It will be the to support me. So currently we're using KU in the system, but in the future we're moving to KA systems. So the current Iridium uh, Certus deployment, they're using a KA band na para sa communication. So it means that they're saying that parang <coughs> ano siya, fiber in the sky. So yung speed nyo, throughput nyo is more than what you, uh, it's almost comparable to what you can have in a fiber link. Ganun siya ka. So, sa visa, there are two things that you have to consider when you are doing this antenna communication. First, to understand is the azimuth angle and the elevation angle of your antennas. So it's important to adjust the angle of the antenna based on to receive the satellite signals. Sino na nag-microwave systems dito? Five minutes na lang. 
Sige lang, sir. Carry on. Dito So this is satellite communication link. Basic block diagram. First question. I'm not going to explain further more on this. Para sa mga ECE, kung alam nyo din to, uh, why we are why we are converting IF to RF? Basic communication. Why we need to convert IF intermediate frequencies longer distances to radio frequencies to sir? accommodate longer distances, sir. Longer distances. Accuracy of signal. Five minutes lang meron tayo, Brad. <laughs> so yeso ni ang Eso ang basic explanation kung bakit kailangan magkaroon tayo ng conversion. So kung putusin, ito ay basic super deadline receiver, receiver ito. Let's explain further this later. Ang equipment natin is, ang specification niyan is from 950 MHz to 0.1 GHz. Sana alam natin. <laughs> Yun ang IF range natin. So yung IF range mo, hindi mo pwede siyang ma-transmit through the satellite o kahit anong transmission medium using IF. It will involve a bigger antenna to transmit a lower frequency. So you will need to, to ano? modulate. modulate it and then okay. amplify it. So kailangan mo siya itaas ang frequency niya. Diba? So nagkakaroon tayo ngayon ng app conversion. Kaya tawag dito is block up conversion. Huwag kayo ma-interface niya sa industry. Pagdating niya sa site, tatanungin kayo, ano ba yung back mo dyan? Gano'n ba ka laki yung wattage ng equipment mo to transmit your data? So whatever happened here, the input like video, audio, or internet, or data, whatever it is, i-convert mo yan, i-encode siya, and then we go to modulator, then you superimpose it to IF signal. And IF, within that range, is cheaper to manufacture compared to higher frequencies. Okay? So, IF, lock-up conversion, transmission, and then RF. Of course, dito rin, uh, kailanganin mo na malaking antenna para ma-receive mo yung frequency kung i-detect mo IF. So, you have to receive it on RF, and then low noise block, convert it, down convert it to IF. Saya yung mga equipment na makikita mo sa, site, sa industry ngayon, Itignan nyo yung frequency, pabahit ka rin sa likod. Itignan nyo yung ano frequency. Ano yun? Mahaba-haba kasi ito sa So ito yung sa transmit segment. Transmit segment. Modem, IM, BAP. Usually is pagka sinabi mo block up conversion, mayroon ka ang LO. Local oscillator frequency. So yung local oscillator uh, uh, local oscillation frequency mo it defines your equipment. So whatever frequency IF frequencies you input it ma-up convert niya using this equipment. So ito yung yung formula niya. Formula niya. RF is Okay, so yung frequency ng RF mo yun is the summation of your local oscillator oscillator frequency plus your IF. Okay, so the buff is being a converting device. Let's pass forward. The C frequency is the same. Ito yung range, mga kapatid. Marami tayong kakabisaduhin. Basa-basa. Tama sa board yan. And of course, magtatanong ka ngayon, tatanong yung sarili mo, bakit di isa antenna? How to uh, to isolate? How? receive and transmit. Kasi kung pagdadaan mo sa isang media yan, paano mo masasabi ko ano yung RX mo, yung DS mo? So sa equipment, makakita ka na ganito. Yan. Ang tawag yan is or remote transducer. Okay? So dito may isolation ka. Dito may LNB at sa kabila may back and your feed horn. It depends on the construction of your feed horn. Kawai-kawai lang tayo dyan, mga kapatid. Galaw-galaw. <laughs> so, polarization. <coughs> Pamilyar kayo sa vertical polarization? Vertical po. Sige nga. 
what defines the polarization? What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Basic wave, electromagnetic wave, electrical wave, perpendicular to magnetic wave. So electric wave, electromagnetics nyo, ang electric wave ang nagtitipay ng polarization ng equipment. So pag tinanong kayo kung anong wave ang ginagamit, which is electrical wave, Electro, electrical wave. Magnetic wave, hindi siya gamit ng gamit sa ito. So pag sinabing vertical, so especially yung mga monopole ng China, siya ng vertical polarization. And then you have your circular polarization. One big question. Anong advantage ng circular sa linya? Quick one. Ang linya, walimbawa, nagtatransmit ka ng 10 dB. Manual dapat. Para mo kung saan. Thank you, Mr. So ang circular, nagtransmit ka ng both polarization. So ibig sabihin, pag nagtransmit ka ng 10 dB rin sa linear, pag ka-circular transmission ang ginamit mo, 3 dB less ka. Less power ka. Pero mas mag-advantage ang circular kasi pag pinadala mo ito sa sky, andyan yung attenuation mo, so it's either kung ano man ang mangyari sa signal mo, you will have a good received signal. But the problem is sa transmission. Ang transmission mo, it will involve higher power to ensure a good signal on the, on the receive side. So yun ang advantage ng circular. Pero ang disadvantage niya, cost. Kaya walang gumagamit gaano ng circular sa KU. So, so sa sat in, in SATCOM, we're, we're using cross-pole and couple. Uh, then you can have five minutes yeah. And couple and cross pole, so they could say RX vertical, PC vertical, and PX horizontal. So it's just what it does on the other end. Or if you say copole or copolarization, what is the interest bit more than the same vertical polarization, you need to Take note, we're discussing only linear polarization. Pasensya na kayo, medyo malalim na naman yung linear. So in, in maritime communication also, the, dinidiscuss natin yung skew ng L&D. <coughs> Halimbawa kasi, ang uh, position mo kasi from the satellite, iba-iba eh, iba yung location. <coughs> so enable for you to align to optimize the RX and TX performance. Kailangan i-adjust yung polarization mo towards the satellite beam. So for example here, Turkey is 36 degrees, pero ang skew mo 60 degrees kasi Yung neutral set 36B is almost the neutral set location niya. Kung saan yung beam niya, yung orbital location niya, kung ito yung orbital location mo, nandito ka on the same location of plane, uh, orbital plane niya or lap, longitude or latitude. Longitude, wala kang skew ang LNB mo. Pero pag lumayo ka, like London ka, tapos 36 degrees, nandito, enable for you to optimize the performance of your system. Mag, mag, yung LNB niya kailangan mong skew. I-move siya to realign towards the satellite. Yun yung basic skew na tinatawag. Okay? Paspas na tayo. Okay, so there are three things that you need to, to understand about skew. Dynamic skew changes while the vessel is moving. So every time the vessel moves, of course, nag-follow yung skew ng system mo. Uh, may intindihan mo nang gusto to pag diniscuss natin yung antenna system. Kasi doon, uh, ituturo sa inyo how the antenna maintains the satellite link even though the vessel is moving. Number one. Pangalawa yung antenna system for uh, airplanes. Gano'ng kabilis yung airplane? How come it managed to still connect to the satellite? Gano'ng siya kabilis? So iba rin yung structure ng antenna doon. So hopefully we have a chance tayo mag-discuss in the future. <laughs> so what are the challenges? Uh, I think uh, we're gonna stop on this one. I'm going to stop on this one, modulation. I would like to discuss further on the modulation because it's the challenge when I moved to industry. 
Kasi tinanong nga po about modulation and what is next, uh, information capacity ng link. Hindi ko masakit. So, ganito lang yan. Simple. Pag sinabi sa digital uh, digital communication nyo, digital modulation nyo, ng QPSK, 2 bits per symbol. At tandaan nyo naman siguro yung INQ graph. Okay? So, 2 bits per symbol siya. Pag APSK or phase shift A is 3 bits per symbol. So, makikita nyo yung uh, structure nyo. Magalang tayo sa mga yung meron nyo. So, the symbol rate is equal to satellite bandwidth divided by carrier spacing. Carrier spacing is given to you by the satellite provider. And then, yung satellite bandwidth mo, syempre, it depends sa inyo kung ano subscription ng company nyo. So, halimbawa, nag-deploy ka ng 3-port QPSK. Tandaan mo, this, this is your forward error correction. So, pag nag-deploy ka ng 3-port 3 quarter QPSK at the 2 megahertz satellite bandwidth ang capacity mo is 2.5 megabits per second yun ang information capacity so dito, ito yung basic ng RF calculation in terms of how many uh, uh, bandwidth that you can utilize for your data ito yung basic yan unfortunately as we develop different mode code modulation and uh, mode code uh, combination na nagiging mahal yung equipment. Kaya sa industry, kung makapansin mo, theoretically, makikita mo lang to. Pero sa industry, mayaman ang kumpanya mo pag nakapag-deploy kayo ng ganitong system. And take note, at a 2 MHz bandwidth, kaya mo magpadala ng 5.9 megabits per second. Pero mag-i-employ ka ng different modulation technique. Kaso, mahal ang equipment mo. And take note also, the subscription for satellite capacity for 1 megahertz is 5,000 USD. So kung mag-subscribe mag ka ng 76 megahertz, ikaw na magbilang na kung magkano babayaran ng company. So you have to understand this. Ito yung, I would like you to take this. Understand information theory kasi mahalaga sa pagtatalikoms ka yan. Mahalaga information theory. And take note, big player dyan ang modulation technique. Hmm. And of course, on the other way around, yung 2.5 megabit per second, parang ang manu-utilize mo lang 2.8 megahertz of carrier frequency. <coughs> Kaso, mahal ang equipment na mag-provide ka ng ganito na 60 PPSK. So you have to study more of your motivation. Yun lang. I think uh, we're gonna cut this off. <laughs> Medyo mahaba pa talaga yung pintuhan na to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.